But today, we have this, notes of a native soy boy. This should be pretty funny. We got typical virtue signaling, male feminist twat. Let's get into his perspective, shall we? February 16th, 2018. Notes of a native soy boy. <laughs> Last year, on International Women's Day, I posted the following tweet. And then there's a screenshot of my tweet. <laughs> tweet. <laughs> tweet. 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 It says, I'm wearing red today because all the women I know are way cooler and smarter and more talented than the men I know. Hashtag oh. International Women's Day. Oh my goodness. He's wearing like period blood red to signal to really revolting women who make cupcakes out of said period blood that he hates himself for being male. Oh wow, let's get into this. <laughs> and then there's a picture of just my chest. I'm wearing a red sweater. And headphones. My chest, my hormone influence, my hormone enhanced chest. It got no likes, no retweets, and no comments. Which is fine. I'm used to sending my tweets out into the void of the internet and not hearing anything back. Oh. But last month, oh. a little over 10 months since I first posted it, my tweet got picked up by an alt-right slash conservative feed. Ah, good old Vince James. Hell yeah. Dude has to say. Let's see, where to go? I think there is a word for quote-unquote men like this. Yeah, the cuck, of course. Um, tweet went viral. Yeah. Good old Vincent James, always bringing the truth. And then there's a picture of this screenshot of the tweet by the Red Elephants. Where is it? Saying, I think there's a word for oh. men like this, dot, yeah. dot, dot. And then they have my tweet. Tweet. And suddenly, my tweet went viral. Or the closest to viral any of my tweets have ever gone. Uh, pretty shortly after, a handful of the Red Republicans' 15,000 followers started trolling me. Here are some of their replies to the above tweet. Uh, at Dick Dellingpole said, <laughs> Mangina. Yep, uh, based. At Ann Deans1 said, Virgins. At He's calling Wolf them virgins, hold on. Said, yeah. Soy boy, uh, boy spelled B O I. Uh, at Leic. Uh, Lea, <laughs> Leic. Jess, Josh, I don't know, said he's doing an Aziz. Ah, yes. An a Aziz. Typical bully. Bully. No, see, an Aziz. I mean, Aziz Ansari is the guy that got falsely, you know, me too by some groupie or something, right? She blew him and then had buyer's remorse afterwards and then went around trying to foster probably money and support and power and influence. Went around saying, oh, Aziz Ansari raped me and yada, yada, yada. And Aziz Ansari, I'm pretty sure, um, has since cocked to feminism. You know, but he probably, he, the thing is, he probably was cocking to it all along. That's, that's the thing. That's why you don't want to give any quarter to these people whatsoever, because that's all they'll do, right? Behavior. Name calling, emasculation. I was a little confused by the he's doing an Aziz comment. Uh, promoting women is now synonymous with Aziz. But soy boy was that. hands down my favorite. It was so strange. Mangina and virgin were hackneyed taunts, but soy boy? Yeah. This was new. It made a little more sense once the trolls started replying to my original tweet. And then there's some I hate the way he says tweet. Shot of some of those replies. At Rio Squirrel 98 said, Do you drink soy milk, BTW? Yeah. Uh, at Aries underscore 921 said, The very definition of a beta male. At Kevin K5722, Dude, that won't get you laid. At IJC Film said, It's going to get you... It's going to get you laid, Brian. You just look as pathetic as you sound. See, I mean, all those are trolls and, you know, but true. I mean, truth trolls, right? It's definitely true. Well, the, the soy thing, I mean, that stemmed from this idea that, like, soy has phytoestrogens, but I think they mistook that for estrogen or whatever. I mean, soy isn't good for you. I know that, but uh, I don't think it literally, like, raises your estrogen. I think the thing, the thing about the soy boys, like, it's a meme that denotes, like... You know, again, like I talk about the urbanite, um, sheltered urbanite hipster who comes from the suburbs into the city and pushes like hipster, hippie, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, wire frame glasses, like soy stash sort of politics. They hang out at, you know, coffee shops, right? They, they hang out at like hipster cafes. So calling them like soy boys, like they drink sip soy lattes at Starbucks or like the trendy DIY hipster coffee shop and they talk about stuff that this dude is talking about like feminism i'm a male feminist ally i'm wearing a period blood covered shirt or a period blood colored shirt to signal that i hate men or I hate myself for being male and then he sits there nonplussed and perplexed as to why 
Um, people are calling him a beta male. Like, he's just... It, it's amazing to get in the head of a normie blue pillar. Good luck, thirsty boy. Yeah. Uh, at real underscore Captain Keck said... Has a, just school. a gif of uh, Trump and then the word cuck underneath it. At free speech underscore dead said soy boy. Mm-hmm. At Hillary Soros said, I doubt any men would hang out with you. You're just trying to get laid. Yep. Too bad women don't like soy guzzlers. And at Scott J O zero five eight six seven O zero one three Scott Johnson said, please touch my penis. But I'm all but I'm but but I'm your ally. Ally spelled A L L I. Ally. And then uh, an emoji. Bug man alert. Bug man alert. Yeah. So. Soy boy. Bug man. Yeah. Soy boy. Bug man. Yeah. Urbanite. Soy boy. Bug man. Shit lib. Definitely. Um. Probably really into Marvel movies. Probably really in, like probably sits there and like tells you that the only reason you don't like Ray and Finn is because you're a sexist racist. That sort of guy. Yeah. The only reason you don't like the uh, <laughs> Ghostbusters reboot is the same reason. Um, yeah, and I would only push back a little bit on this one. Dude, that won't get you laid. Yeah, it actually will. This does get you, this, this mindset does get you laid with really, really disgusting, <laughs> like, like Bebop and, like Bebop and Rocksteady looking women. Like that, that's the kind of like, you know, punks basically, but they're usually really overweight or really malnourished. There doesn't seem to be much in between like you'll you'll get laid with women with really bad physiognomy really just de-evolved looking kind of meth head looking you know types so he's a thirsty boy maybe he's trying to get laid or something but you know it's not unheard of that this tactic actually works surprisingly and cuck a veritable or, you know, alt-right bad alphabet looking. soup using context clues I understood that soy boy is a pejorative because it means I'm not man enough to drink real milk in their mind <laughs> Soy milk is somehow feminine or makes a person feminine. No, also, what would well, they say if they knew I didn't drink soy milk, but even worse, almond milk? It's That's just, not entirely true. It's just they don't understand anything. The normies, man. Just normie tier understanding of virtually everything. It's just, like I said before, it's just, it's, it's, it, I think maybe some people actually think like, oh yeah, you're literally imbibing estrogen when you drink soy or something. But I think a lot of people just acknowledge that the ty- kind of people hanging out at the hipster coffee shops, advocating against America, against white people, against, you know, oh, pro BLM, pro feminism. These are the kind of people that are hanging out at the trendy hipster co- uh, indie coffee shops drinking soy lattes. That's, that's just, it's a kind of, it's just a kind of person that you can identify. I did drink almond milk for a long time, Ugh. but after reading Nina Techoltz's The Big Fat Surprise last summer, I switched back to normal milk. So in the strictest sense of the term, I am, sadly, not a soy boy. Yeah, you are. What I found surprising is that no one attacked me based on race. The Kim in my name was there from the beginning. For the trolls who responded to my original tweet, they would have seen my avatar. Even if it isn't readily apparent that I'm half Korean, I have one of those racially ambiguous hues that prompts guesses anywhere from Latin American to Middle Eastern. It may be hard to pinpoint what my race is, but you can... The Japanese are going to be the only ones getting after you for being Korean, my guy. You can pretty easily tell it isn't white. And yet, to their credit, they didn't go there. Also, thankfully, their taunts weren't violent. My reaction to their tweets, both then and now, is amusement. I felt like getting harassed by my fifth grade bully. Only in this scenario, I'm 33 years old, and he's still 10. Why should I take offense to a child making fun of me? The whole idea is absurd. But the reason I can laugh it off is because I didn't feel physically threatened. I'd also like to acknowledge my male privilege here. <laughs> Twitter and the internet as a well whole is a toxic environment for women. Oh, boy. To know that this kind of harassment happens to women in exponentially more disgusting and frightening ways is simply unacceptable. Yeah, who cares? Since this was my first time being trolled on Twitter, I didn't know how to respond. I knew I didn't want to engage with them. Don't feed the trolls is one of the most useful rules of the internet, right up there with don't read the comments. But I wanted to get the last word. Don't read the comments. So yeah, I mean, this is this was from a few years ago, but this is from a few years ago. But this is sort of this is this is the roadmap, right? Oh, the women and minorities can't handle social media, so we have to make it a a nice, you know, a nice cushioned, bumpered playground for the minorities and the women. And it's just like, no, how about we just like kick them off the internet? <laughs> kick them off the internet, not the edge lords. I mean, come on. And then there's. A picture of my tweet. 
So I tweet. quoted the Red Elephant's tweet, the one saying, I think there is a word for men like this. And I said, Alpha. honored that a tweet I wrote 10 months ago finally got some traction thanks to at Real Red Elephant. I'm also hashtag blessed. I have other things to do than respond to year old tweets at Aries underscore 921, at Kevin K. Year old tweet, dude. Year old tweet. Year old tweet, dude. That's a tweet every fucking day, dude. It's just a matter of like, <laughs> it's just a matter of seeing the next one. I hadn't seen this tweet for, um, from two years ago. And I'm, I followed, I've been following Vincent James for a couple of years now. It's just a matter of, it's just a matter of like you refresh your fucking feed and you'll be able to see another soy boy saying this. It's just, oh, year old tweet, year old tweet, dude, whatever. It's daily. <laughs> Eight at IJC film at Hillary Soros. I tagged some of the people, bots, who first responded, and then I immediately First responders. Them. My intention Gaming, was to have them see gamer, my tweet, first responders. but then not be able to respond to it. However, that's not how blocking works. Once you block someone, they can't read your tweets. As it turns out, that ended up being a better strategy. Because I had tagged them in my tweet, they all got a notification that I had mentioned them. But because I then blocked them, they had no idea what I actually said. Ian at IJC Film sums it up best. And then there's another screenshot. Uh, at Flumo said, <laughs> that somehow escalated quickly and also very slowly. Uh, and then Ian at IJC Film said, damn, what did he say? He blocked me. And then at Aries underscore 921 said the customary leftist farewell. Yep. And then took a screenshot uh, of his screen, which showed you are blocked from following at yet another Brian and viewing yet another Brian's tweets, which I think is a pretty good way to deal with trolls. Feel free to use it yourself. I'm calling it the customary leftist farewell strategy. <laughs> a little while later, I was hanging out with some friends and we decided to look up soy boy in urban dictionary. And then there's a screenshot of the Urban Dictionary definition, which says, quote, The origin of the term derives from the negative effects soy consumption has been proven to have on the male physique and libido. The average soy boy is a feminist, non-athletic, non yep. non-athletic, has never been in a fight, will probably marry the first girl that has sex with him, and likely reduces all his arguments to labeling the opposition as Nazis. Pretty accurate. See also cuck, beta slash omega male, Orbiter, kissless virgin, male feminist. Right, so now that this dude has been shown that he fits the definition of a soy boy to a T, do you think he's going to be like, well, I don't drink that much soy. I prefer almond milk. See, this is also how, I mean, this, this is how no progressive alive is funny because they just don't tell the truth about anything. In order to be funny, you have to be able to tell the truth about something, right? So, oh, is he saying that I drink, I drink too much soy milk, or I, well, I drink almond milk? Well, now I drink regular milk. They're calling you a soy boy because you have that hipster fucking coffee shop douchebag vibe, where you tell men and white people to shut up. Like that's why they call you a soy boy. It's it's right in the definition. It's in the definition of in. Honor, and then there's you know. an example in use. Man one, if you kill your enemies, they win. Man two, shut the fuck up, soy boy. I have to say, yep. I'm a pretty average soy boy. There you go. I wouldn't be I won't be marrying the first woman I slept with, nor do I have a tendency to call people I disagree with Nazis. But the rest checks out. I guarantee he's the lying. The larger question, of course, is why being less masculine is somehow bad. He called or he called Vincent ridiculed, James alt right, so he's or, lying. Said another way, why being feminine is somehow wrong. Why are these men threatened that I'm friends with more women than men? Why are these men threatened that I'm a vegetarian? Okay, being threatened by someone who's, like, kind of gay is absolutely natural, dude. Like, I mean, I live in Dahmer country, okay? Like, I, I live in a city where <laughs> if you are in any, like, I talk, I talk about this semi-regularly. I mean, if you're standing in any of the, like, trendy or, you know, urban center areas of Milwaukee, you are standing, like, 20 blocks or less away from where Dahmer happened. And he's like, oh, you feel threatened by effeminate men. It's like, you're an effeminate male because you have something wrong. Like, that's generally why. So people are pointing out there's something, like, either off in your testosterone levels or something off with the way you were raised. You know, like, there probably wasn't a solid male role model around. You know, and if there, if there was, maybe he was, like hands off or something i don't know something like that but why are these men threatened that i don't own a gun that i don't drink beer that i don't play sports 
threatened? By dismissing people like me as beta males, they're ignoring the complexity of the world around them. Uh There's a fantastic essay by Adrian Rich entitled Women in Honor, Some Notes on Lying that I used to teach to my undergrads. Here's one of my favorite passages. Quote, in speaking of lies, we come inevitably to the subject of truth. There is nothing simple or easy about this idea. There is no the truth, a truth. Truth is not one thing or even a system. It's an increasing complexity. The pattern of the carpet is a surface. When wow. we look closely or when we become weavers, we learn of the unit of the tiny multiple threads unseen in the overall pattern. So this is this is right here. What you're hearing, in my opinion, is the uh, beginning of the whole like two plus two equals five shit. So he says, he's saying like, oh, it's not really that. It's something else. There is no truth. This is totally postmodernist fucking horseshit, isn't it? Total postmodernist fucking horseshit. There's no objective truth. There's no objective facts. It's all subjective. Oh, it's not really a carpet. It's a bunch of fibers. Shut the fuck up, idiot. Soy the boy. On the underside. <laughs> Let's bring back soy boy already. After reading this passage, I'd ask my students whether they agreed with Rich. Which is more complex, truth or lies? Most of my classes were pretty evenly split. Half of my students said something along the lines of, lies lies are way more complex. The truth is simple. It's the truth. But once you start lying, you often have to come up with other lies to make sure your first lie isn't revealed. The idea being, if you had only stuck to the truth all along, things would be simpler. Once you start lying, you can't ever stop. Right, so if you go around saying, like, well, men can act like women and still be men, uh, considered men, or, 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 sorry, or, like, considered, like, a quality man. Or the other thing, oh, a man can have a surgery or put on a wig and become a woman. It's all subjective. It's all up in the air or whatever. Who cares, right? This is, wow. <laughs> this I is used what to we're think seeing. this way, too. But what Rich does in the essay is show how lies are actually very simple. And the reason they're simple is because lies always move away from complexity. Whether we're telling a white lie, omitting information, or saying something flat out wrong, these lies are an effort to make things easier for the liar, often by avoiding the intricacies of a situation. The truth, on the other hand, expands to new possibilities. They might be uncomfortable, painful possibilities, but ultimately the truth opens doors while lies slam them shut. Hence, the truth is complex and lies are simple. I'm no. guessing the reason my Twitter trolls are threatened by so-called beta males is that we contradict their simple view of masculinity. They don't want to acknowledge the complexity of gender. I'm weirded out by you because you just sound like somebody who moon, you know, like has a double life at night, like kidnapping kids or something. Like I don't know. You sound like a like a gay child molester to me. Like you know. But again, Dahmer country. Like in my opinion, you know, if you're <laughs> if you live in Milwaukee or the Midwest or whatever. Or any, or fuck it. I mean, if you live in any, in any like dangerous coastal city that has like a fucking gay bathhouse district or whatever, or like has like huge LGBTQ lefty activism of any sort, you should feel kind of weirded out or quasi threatened, in my opinion. What, what's wrong Gender, with that? Of sexuality, just, of race, of pr- you're defending what's right. Privilege, and so they respond the only way they know how by calling me a soy boy 